Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. It's time to wrap up our Stones Week weeks. So we're coming to the second week. I don't know. We, if you've missed all the other episodes, I doubt you have. But if, in case you did, we started with a, a review of Hackney Diamonds, the new record. And, uh, and then we did two episodes of ranking the Rolling Stones uh, studio albums. I went through the U.S. discography, all 26 records, including the new one. And this is sort of the wrap-up episode, but some really important and, I think, interesting things to talk about if you're into the Stones, right? Because we, we, we need to talk about live albums and compilations. And there's some substantial ones and some not-so-substantial ones in the Stones uh, discography, so let's sort through that. I don't have everything, but I do, I'll show you what I have and kind of tell you what I think is worthwhile out of what I have and what I've heard. All right. Well, let's start with the live albums. We'll start there. And, um, you know, so you really have kind of two tracks here. You've got contemporary live albums. You know, what we mean by that is, you know, live albums that were released, you know, kind of at the time throughout their whole timeline. And then, you know, what we generally call archival, you know, live albums, which is, you know, stuff that's been kind of culled from the archives and, and released probably more recently, but from all, all, all periods. Anyway, so you kind of mix and match all those. I will say the Rolling Stones is one of those groups, you know, kind of not, not quite at Neil Young level, but close. The Rolling Stones have done a really good job with the archival live releases. I, I don't have all of them, but I've got some and some I really like. So I, I want to talk about those. All right, so I'll just, I'll just kind of mix and match and basically try to go in chronological order. So, you know, you know, the first sort of official live Stones album was pretty bad. <laughs> and um, that is, of course, got live if you want it. Well, I do want it. I'm not sure I want this, though. Um, so this is, uh, ah, the date. Let me write the date. And of course, it's not readily available on there. This, I don't know. Ed editor can put it up there when this was released. But um, anyway, you look at the track list, and of course, this is this is like the Brian Jones era. And I mean, this should be phenomenal. I mean, it's got a killer track list. But the problem is the sound quality is. It sounds like a bad bootleg. The sound quality is bad. Uh, the crowd is, is like screaming girls that drowns out the band half the time. And, you know, you can tell they're kind of rushing through the songs to get the, anyway, it's just, it's not a bad, or not, not a great thing. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think, I, I seem to remember liking Lady Jane on here for some reason. So this would have been 65, 66, I'm guessing. Actually, the editor already put the date up there, but I'm just guessing. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> Moving on from there. We have what I consider to be like the essential, if you're going to get one, the essential Rolling Stones live album. And, and, and it's, it's part of that streak from 68 to 72. It's like right in there, 1970s when this was put out. And it is essential. That, of course, is Get Your Ya Ya's Out, The Rolling Stones in Concert. There's Charlie Watts right there, Rest in Peace. Yeah, this this I, I think is the one like essential live album from the Stones. I'm gonna show you some other ones I really like. I think are really good. If you gotta have one, it's here. Um, I mean, uh, you know, this is the Mick Taylor, you know, era, of course, and they're they're just on fire here. It's just deep grooves. Um, you know, of course, the the Midnight Rambler on there is uh, is is definitive, I think. Uh, Love in Vain, their that Robert Johnson cover is just incredible. And they, I mean, this this is the one to get. I mean, this was I, I think at the peak of their powers in, in the Mick Taylor era. Anyway, I only wish it was longer. Um, now they, they, I didn't pull it off the shelf. I do have it. They did release on CD at least an extended version of it with with more tracks. Um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, like none of the added tracks I, I think were as great as what was on the original. So 
that was kind of a little let down, actually. All right, so what do we got next here? Um, let's go with one of these archival releases. I do have it's Rolling Stones from the Vaults from this vault from the Vault series. This is L.A. Forum Live in 1975. Again, Mick Taylor era. This should be great. And, and musically, it is awesome. I mean, 75. I'm going to be honest with you. I, the one disappointing uh, factor on this one is Mick Jagger, surprisingly. Uh, he, you know, when you listen to Jagger live, you know, a lot of times he gets kind of lazy, I think, singing. Now, part of it, he's running all over the stage, so you know, he's kind of out of breath, too. But um, this one especially, he's just got a lot of slurred lyrics. You know, it's always hard to decipher what he's singing. It's really hard here, uh, you know, where he just kind of, you know, just says words sort of like halfway through. It doesn't even finish the word. I, I don't know. I, Jagger's singing to me on this one kind of brings it down. The band's on fire, of course. Moving to 1977. It's kind of interesting. So, Love You Live was put out. This is, uh, you know, getting into the Ron Wood era. Uh, good set list. I, I think pretty pedestrian, though. I mean, it's kind of you know, almost stones by numbers at this point. Now, side three here is uh, from the El Macumbo set, and it's kind of this uh, more stripped-down, bluesy stuff. What's cool is more recently they released, because this is from you know several dates all over the place on this tour, I guess. They released the entire El Macumbo uh, show uh, on, C on, I guess, on vinyl too, probably. I don't know. I just have a CD. And it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cracking. This was... This was a fun show. This I'm trying to remember the story behind this. This was uh, this was this club in Canada, and they uh, it was kind of one of the surprise shows. They had uh, I forgot who it was, but they were advertising this one band, this kind of, kind of local band or whatever. And so this audience shows up at this club to see what they think is this local band, and it's like. The freaking Rolling Stones. <laughs> you know? Anyway, it's just kind of a fun, it's a fun thing. And it, this, this is pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. All right. We're going to keep it like both stacks here, trying to go in order here. Um, I guess we'll go with this one. Now, I, I don't have a copy of Still Life, which is really bad. Uh, it, it's just the sound is, is kind of flat. It's weird because the performances sound flat, but I have two, you know, one kind of from the vaults really, actually two from the vault releases, one, one's on vinyl, one's on, from basically that same tour. And I love these. It's so weird. So still life, I don't think is very good, but this is my probably other than, uh, other than uh, get your yayas out, of course, this is probably my favorite live stones that I have. Uh, Hampton Coliseum, live 1981. So this was the uh, Tattoo You tour, basically. This is fantastic. This is so good. I recommend getting this. Uh, I mean, it's just, you've got a great set list, long set list. I, I mean, they're playing for a while. Just My Imagination is awesome on there. It just it, it's so good. And it's, got, it's kind of cool. This was uh, on Keith Richards' birthday. I think it was only his 112th birthday. Uh, and, um, you know, they sing happy birthday to him. There's, uh, I was reading the liner notes, and you kind of hear it if you're listening for it. I think it's during Satisfaction. A fan jumps on the stage and sort of rushes Mick Jagger, and Keith, like, gets in between them and, like, shoves him aside with his guitar. And Anyway, that supposedly that's all on here, you know, Kind of here because I think the guitar drops out a little bit. Anyway, it's kind of fun. But this is a killer set. This is a killer set. I, I wanted this on vinyl. I, I I could never find it on vinyl for some reason when I was just kind of looking out in the wild. But I found this, which is uh, 1982. So it's sort of the same, really, you know, the European tour. I think I you know that same tour, basically. The Euro European show this is um, Round, Round Hay. What is that? Oh, live in Leeds, yeah. 
Yeah, live in Leeds, 92. So it's, it's kind of similar. I, I I think Hampton Coliseum is a little bit better, but this is almost there, and, it, and it's close to the same set. So I was pretty pumped. You know, I just wanted wanted the, that, that, that set, that era, that tour on vinyl, so it was kind of cool to find that. Uh, moving on, you know, from kind of the Steel Wheels era on, they all they released almost a, you know, a live album, every studio album, and even when they didn't have a studio album, they would you know every major tour they just cash it in. I I don't have a lot of those, you know. I have uh, this is I think No Security. This is Bridges to Babylon tour, and it's you know whatever. Uh, how what was it? Flashpoint was one. I used to have that on CD. It's a couple others that they all kind of run together. There is one from that era uh, that I think really does stand out. And this was, uh, what was this? Uh, 19, I can't, 995, I think 1995. And it's Stripped. And Stripped is in it. It's kind of a largely, yeah, there's some electric on there, but it's largely acoustic, kind of an unplugged type of show. This is a gem. Uh, you know, it, I guess it's Voodoo Lounge. A tour or around there, so that ninety five. Um, this is a gem. There are one that they kind of reach. You know, it's kind of cute that they do a cover of "Like a Rolling Stone." And it's all right, but um, but you know they, they you know, shine a light. The spider and the fly. I'm free. You know, dead flowers uh, slipping away from <laughs> steel wheels, which is really good. Actually, one of those Keith Richards sung songs. Um, just an interesting set list. It's not all, you know, the same hits regurgitated all the time. Sweet Virginia is on there. It's really good. Um, the highlight, believe it or not, is Wild Horses. I think the Wild Horses on here, I think, this sounds blasphemous, but is equal to the studio version on uh, Stick Fingers for me. I, I love the Wild Horses on here. I, anyway, I think this is a gem amongst otherwise in this era pretty bland live albums that all run together all right well let's talk about compilations i mean there's a ton of stones compilations out there i don't have all of them i don't have near all of them but let me talk about the, some of the ones i have that i think are essential um oh, this one's kind of interesting this rolling stones rarities that came out on cd 71 to 2003 it's real random there's some interesting stuff on here, though. Actually, the Wild Horses from the Strip, from the Strip album is on here. <laughs> it kind of shows you they thought it was pretty good, too. Some live tracks on here. The extended dance version of Miss You with Disco. That's actually pretty good. 12-inch uh, of Mixed Emotions. Yeah, it just, it's all over the place. There's a great live version of Through and Through. If you watched my countdown when I talked about that song, I love that song. Anyway. Dance mix, a Harlem shuffle, and all kinds of weird stuff on here. It's minor. It's minor. Um, going back, going back. One of the very first, I think it maybe was the first comp, uh, at least in the U.S., is one of their best. Big hits. High Tide and Green Grass, the Rolling Stones. This is a great comp. Um, wow. Got uncomfortably close photos of some of the guys. Uh, but this is a great comp because it's really specific and serves a purpose. I was looking for the track listing on here. I don't want to read it to you. Um, because it, what was it, uh, 1966 when this, there it is, when this was released. So it's a fantastic, like, summation of that early period. They're getting rid of you know, a lot of the kind of cover songs that aren't as essential. I mean, I'll just read the track listing to you. I, I mean, just how tight. Well, satisfaction, the last time, as tears go by, time is on my side, it's all over now, tell me, 19th Nervous Breakdown, Heart of Stone, Get Off My Cloud, Not Fade Away, Good Times, Bad Times, Play With Fire. Uh, just knockout after knockout. It's, just, it's a really nice, concise, if you want that era, like this is the best of that, that first era. I, I think it covers it great. This is a fantastic comp. This was uh, released in the U.S. 1967, Flowers. It was sort of a, kind of a, uh, like mopping up, you know, of, of 
you know, a lot of it was tracks that had appeared on some of the UK releases that had been left off some of the US releases. But then there's some stuff that had already been released in the US. And it's just an odd mix. And then there's some stuff that were, you know, album tracks on some of the US albums. But for some reason, it like really plays well, holds together nicely. Um, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that's just available as singles only, and then you know, and then some and, and like on the for instance on the U.S. Um, between the buttons, I love Backstreet Girl. That was taken off of that in order to put uh, Ruby Tuesday and Let's Spend the Night together, which are both on here too. Actually, uh, it was kind of weird, but um, and so Backstreet Girls on here. So that would have been the first time in the U.S. you could have gotten that great song. So yeah, this is a a really good listen you know for, from a very creative period all right uh i, I i've talked about this several times and I, way back when i made like top 10 comps of all you know my favorite top top compilations of all time um you know comps that really take on life of their own i, I mean this hot rocks Rolling Stones 6471 double album was my introduction to the Rolling Stones. I, I mean, this is still essential to me. And then it's follow up. More Hot Rocks, Big Hits and Phased Cookies is another double. You know, so th th this serves as like a great you know, before box sets were a thing because Hot Rocks came out in uh, uh, 71 and then Hot Rocks 2 in 72. Uh, so before, you know, box sets were a thing, you buy these two things and you got four albums of just killer stones. Awesome stuff. Especially on this one, there's some kind of rarities or at least harder to find stuff at the time, uh, which was kind of nice. Put these together. And, and, I mean, that you know, it takes care of a lot of ground, really. And what's cool is to so take both of those, you know, cover like 64 to 71. And then... You tack on this one, which is Rewind, and that's 71 to 84, going all the way through the great underrated undercover. Um, <laughs> so you, you, know, you take those two Hot Rocks collections and then Rewind, and you've got basically 64 to 84, like a pretty you know, awesome five records of, hit, of hit, really great hits. This was a real, this is out of print, I think. This is, this is a real tight collection. All right. Uh, I, I guess I should mention Metamorphosis. Now, this, this was put out in uh, I don't know, 75 or something like that, right? In the mid-70s. Um, I believe you know, Abco and you know, the, some contract issues and Abco had, a, had rights to put some more stuff out, so they did. I, I think this was sort of without some of the Stones' uh, permission, but... Some interesting rarities on here, um, like some alternate takes of like Out of Time, Heart of Stone, uh, uh, and and some uh, some otherwise kind of hard to find stuff on here. Memo from Turner is on here from from that that great that was a performance, that great film that Mick Jagger was in. That's a Rolling Stones version of Memo from Turner. I'm going down downtown, Susie, Jive and Sister Fanny. Um, yeah, some of these, uh, some things just stick in your mind. It's great. Yeah, interesting. So kind of an odds and sods, you know, kind of a kind of rarities and alternate takes. It's worthwhile if you're a Stones fanatic, I think. Yeah, well, that's all I have. Um, now, I, I would mention, I don't have it, but, uh, you know, the, the, the singles collection, the London Years, it was put out in, was it, 89? Most great on CD. That one's pretty awesome. You know, it covers the 60s, basically, into the early 70s. Kind of the Hot Rocks era, but it, it's a little more extensive. Because I think it's got most of all the A-sides and B-sides of the singles. And anyway, and th th that's worth it, too. I, I don't own that because I kind of own everything else, but that's pretty cool. I guess the editor can throw it up there. It's the, the singles collection, the London years. All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the Stones week, you know, these four, four episodes where we delve into the Rolling Stones and all kinds of... I've enjoyed it. I hope you've kind of enjoyed it with me. But thanks for watching. So I do promise, next episode on Amity Tracks will not be about the Rolling Stones.
<laughs> okay, we're going to move on. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, like the videos, all that great stuff. And we'll see you next time on Amity Track.